if you'd have bet the Blazers yeah. last night, you'd have won, right? Yeah. In the win loss, it still counted as a loss, of course. But it was a good fight, and uh, you know, uh, the tomorrow night against Golden State will be the first time in 16 games that the Blazers will have played a team that didn't have at least one day off before playing them. So the schedule has, has not helped at all to this point. The Golden State plays tonight against Sacramento, so finally we get somebody on the second night of a back-to-back. -back, so. Hopefully, uh, some home games we've got coming up and get back in the week. When did you get home last night after the game in L.A.? We got home about 2.15 or so. Right. so uh, which is a reasonable. I mean, we have, uh, Portland and Miami have the worst travel in the league uh, based on where we're at. And uh, unfortunately, the last two franchise moves did help us with Seattle going to uh, Oklahoma City and Vancouver going to Memphis. So, uh, so most of our trips are... I think the closest one we have is Utah and Sacramento, which are about 90 minutes or 115. But uh, we don't have any close ones anymore, so I think it's one of the, one of the close ones. How do you like Caleb? He's sure a fireball. I tell you what, he's got us uh, playing with a competitive spirit again, and, and I think that's the good thing. And uh, what a great story. I mean, 33 years old, and first Mexican American to be an NBA head coach, and uh, he's uh, he's somebody who's uh, you know he, he lives and breathes basketball. He's had a dream, and it's happening. I think sooner maybe than he thought, but uh, he's at least uh, the guy are playing for him and I think that's the thing that everybody wanted to see I mean I think everybody loved Nate but sometimes you get to a point where guys aren't listening as well as they used to and so I yeah, like my wife doesn't listen to me yes so. but she's <laughs> still you know, that's, that's the main thing but and the, so the Blazers players you know they probably needed to hear a different message and so Caleb at least has got them fighting again and uh, and so last night we got down 12 in the first quarter and the way some of the games on the last road trip had gone that would have deteriorated from there but at least now the guys fought back tied the score a couple of times had the ball with a chance to take the lead I think we could have got the lead in the fourth quarter and the Lakers might have got a little nervous yeah, one three-pointer but it would have landed like a yeah, that would yeah, have helped yeah and Jamal had a driving layup that uh, got blocked out of bounds but uh, we never could get the lead and the Lakers are the, the uh, second best home team in the league so they're, they're, they're pretty good and so it's no shame to lose them them. But, uh, but Golden State tomorrow, got Oklahoma City at home Tuesday, got uh, New Orleans at home Thursday, so three straight home games coming up, hopefully a chance to get back in this playoff race because uh, time is yeah. time's getting short for that. We're, uh, uh, we need to win at least three or four games out of the next five or six to even have a chance, I think. I think so, yeah, and then after the three, then you go right back to L.A. for another one-game situation against the Clippers next Friday, and then uh, back here for another home game with Minnesota. But, Minnesota uh, lost in double overtime last night. Yeah, that was a, that was a wild game in Oklahoma City. Uh, Kevin Love had 51 points, and they lost 149 to 140, so it was really, a, really a, a wild game. But that's the problem, unfortunately, with uh, looking at the playoffs. We're four games out of the eighth spot, but it's not as if we're in ninth and we just got to catch one team. There's, a, there's about three teams bunched with us, so uh, you're, you're really watching a lot of games on the, on the scoreboard every night. So. Uh, it's, it's hard to sometimes know who to pull for, but as you get down the stretch, a lot of teams in the West will play each other. We'll have a chance to play some of these teams ahead of us, so it's going to take some work, but uh, but maybe we can continue to build on some of the good things. And I'll tell you, J.J. Hickson, who we just added this week, had a terrific game last night in his first game as a Blazer. I hadn't even had a practice yet, and came in and had the 14 points, gave us a nice spark, so I think he's going to help us the rest of the way. So they'll get a practice today, a little day off, catch a team on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, so... Hopefully some good things start with uh, tomorrow night. What does your gut level tell you about the chances of Caleb possibly being uh, elected as the head coach for next year? You know, again, uh, there's going to be a lot of decisions to be made in the offseason. We're going to have some salary cap flexibility. We're going to have some high draft choices. Uh, we have to hire a general manager. So, you know, in the normal way of doing things, the general manager would come in and make the decision uh, primarily about who the next head coach will be. If Caleb, you know, somehow can get us in the playoffs, you know, maybe we'll have a phenom on our hands. So like Eric Spolster in Miami, that's certainly his, his idol because he's following his path. Uh, and so who knows? I, I think uh, if I were to say today, I would guess they'd probably want a little bigger name maybe, but, uh, but who knows? Maybe they'll find out that uh, they can't do any better than, than Caleb. Which, uh, which, and again, I, I love the guy and I, I've known him for a long time and I'm very happy for his, uh, his success. A great story is that... Uh, uh, Caleb and I, our favorite comedian is, is George Lopez, and, I, and, I, and I've known George for a lot of years since he was a, just a touring comedian uh, uh, before he got to be you know, as, as famous, and when I lived in Sacramento, I'd see him a lot when he'd come to town. So uh, knowing that, and, I've, and I owe Caleb uh, over the summer to get to see George's uh, TV show and get to meet him afterwards and so forth. 
So I sent George a note that uh, George, a proud Mexican American himself, and I said to George, and just so you know, Caleb, the guy you met in the summer, is now our head coach, and he's the first Mexican American. And, he, and I said, if you want to drop him a note, I think he, you know, he'd really be thrilled by it. And so sure enough, he did, and then he told Caleb if he can get him a copy of the picture that uh, that was taken of the two of them after his show, that he put it on his Twitter page, and uh, and really, you know, show how proud he is of what Caleb's doing. So it's a great, great thing. So Caleb, I think, you know, somebody who's never going to get uh, uh, enamored with the tension and, and the notoriety that comes with being a head coach. He doesn't you know, ever let anything go to you know go to go to his head. Uh, but I think that one, you know, really. Uh, Told him that it was, you know, pretty neat. And he had his mom in town for our last home game. It was her birthday, and so she got to see his first win, you know, at the Rose Garden. So he's he's, he's a really great story and a, and a great person. And uh, if if he doesn't get this head coaching job, he will have a head coaching job in the NBA probably very soon. Oh, that's great. Okay, round of applause for Brian. Appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Now let's have a drawing. Uh, let's have our first drawing, and let's give away. I was going to save this for later, but this is so nice. This is a beautiful, beautiful golf shirt, trailblazer. This is a